Right, so we want to continue looking at some properties of determinants. All right, so recall if I have a square matrix, then a determinant is a scalar associated to that um, square matrix, right? Um, and we saw previously the definition of a determinant using permutations. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to consider certain formula, right? So the first one that I want to look at would be this one over here, right? that if I have two square matrices of the same size, right, A and B, right, so both of these are N by N matrices, then the determinant of uh, the product, right, so here this A, B, I take the product of the matrices A and B first, and then take the determinant of that, right, that is actually equal to taking the determinant separately and then taking the product, right, um, in other words, you take determinant of A and you take determinant of B separately and you multiply those and that gives you the determinant of AB, right? Okay, so I will do, I won't go through the proof um, in in detail as it is in the notes, right? But what I'll do is I'll do um, uh, a simple example, right? I'm um, using this uh, this two by two matrix over here, right? Um, to illustrate how the proof works, right? As a matter of fact, this example will um, contain some of the steps in the proof, right? Okay, right. So before I get to this one here, right, where this is a general case of um, if I have two um, two matrices and determinant of A B is equal to determinant of A times determinant of B, let's consider um, uh, a slightly easier case where your matrix A over here instead of being a general matrix would now be an elementary matrix, right? Okay, so the matrix A would be an elementary matrix. So actually what we're doing is we're now going to look at this here, right? So if you compare what this is here, right? So this is a product of two matrices E and B, right? Um, and you notice that this form over here this formula here is really the same as this formula over here, except in this formula here, the A is restricted to be an elementary matrix, right? Okay, so we want to show this um, first of all, and um, um, I'll explain this again using uh, a simple example. All right, okay, so we're looking at um, this statement here, right, a product of uh, elementary matrix and a matrix called B, right? Okay, so, right, um, so recall that this is my two by two identity matrix. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply uh, the single row operation on it. And this row operation is exchanging row one and row two, right? Okay, so if I have the identity matrix and I apply the single row operation to it, right, what that row operation is doing is switching row one and row two, right? So remember, this is my notation that I have identity matrix two, right? And applying the row operation epsilon to it, right? Okay, so applying the row operation epsilon, which is switching two rows, right? We just switch these two rows to me, right? And when I switch row one and row two, this is what I get. I get zero, one and one, zero, right? Okay, and you want to recall what the definition of an elementary matrix is, right? Um, if you have an identity matrix and you apply a single row operation, such as this overhead, to an identity matrix, right? Um, then your identity matrix is going to change, right? Um, and the changed matrix over here, this is an example of an elementary matrix, right? Okay, all right, so one more time. Um, an elementary matrix is if you have an identity matrix and you apply a single row operation to it, right? And in this case, this identity, two by two identity, we apply the single row operation, which is exchange in row one and row two, right? Okay, right. Um, this over here, this is a diagonal matrix here, right? This identity matrix is a diagonal matrix. It means, well, diagonal means that the only non-zero entries are on this main diagonal here, right? And we saw that um, to take the determinant of a diagonal matrix, and more generally to take the determinant of a triangular matrix, all you do it is you just take the product of the diagonal elements, right? So the determinant of this two by two identity is equal to one over here, right? Okay, and next thing is, um, 
Well, we saw previously, right, that um, if I have a matrix and I apply row operation to it, right, then that will cause a change in the determinant, right? So that is actually summarized over here, right? Okay, so here I have uh, a matrix A to start off with, right? And what I'm doing is I'm applying a single row operation to A, right? So that's what the epsilon A is, right? And the change matrix, the determinant to the change matrix um, is going to be related to the determinant to the original matrix. Um, and what it, how it, what that relation is depends on the type of row operation, right? So this is an, um, and the relationship depends on the type of row operation that you have, right? Okay, so um, in the case of when you the row operation is switching two rows, right? Then the determinant of the modified matrix is equal to minus the determinant of the original matrix A, right? Okay, all right. So we want to use that over here, right? Okay, so I have identity, which is this diagonal matrix here, and then the elementary matrix. When I apply a single row operation to I two, right? What I do is I switch these two rows, right? So the relationship between the determinant of I2 and the determinant of uh, E, right, is that um, the determinant of E is going to be the negative of the determinant of I2, right? Because going from here to here, you switch a row, right? And when you switch a row, you introduce a minus sign on the determinant, right? Okay, so that is what this line is saying, right? Um, the determinant of E, which is the determinant of this matrix, and I just wrote it out over here is a negative of the determinant of the original matrix 1 0 0 1 right um, okay so, and um, we already know that well we just saw that determinant of the identity matrix is 1 so what I get is determinant of uh, the elementary matrix over here is minus 1 right Okay, of course, you could always just work this out directly, right? Because if I want to get determinant of the E over here, I could just simply take the determinant of this here, right? Um, and using basically a formula for determinant for a 2 by 2 matrix, right? But what I'm illustrating over here is that the determinant of um, the elementary matrix over here, you can get in terms of determinant of your original identity matrix by adjusting that determinant by appropriate um, in an appropriate way depending on the type of row operation that it is and in this case the type of row operation is switching row 1 and row 2 which means that I'm going to introduce a minus sign right all right okay so um, determinant of E is minus 1 right okay so let's consider B over here so remember what I'm trying to do right I'm trying to give an example of this result over here, right? determinant of a product of um, matrices, where your first matrix over here is an elementary matrix, is going to be a product of determinants, right? Okay, so the matrix B that I'm gonna use here is just a general um, two by two, right? So I didn't even specify values for these, right? Um, okay, so B is a two by two matrix, general two by two matrix. And now I'm going to consider E times B, right? Which is this E times B over here, right? Okay, so E is this matrix here, um, 0, 1, 1, 0, right? And B is the matrix A, B, C, D, right? Okay, so what's this product E times B, right? Well, this product E times B, right? Remember, this is an elementary matrix where you apply the a row operation to the identity, right? That is what the E is, right? So you want to remember what we did for elementary matrices, right? This over here multiplying by this elementary matrix, right? Um, which is a switch of row one and row two to get this, right? This over here, when I multiply by this elementary matrix, this will in fact cause row one and row two to switch for the B, right? Notice if I, when I multiply this E over here by the B, right? The row one and row two of B will switch over here, right? Okay, so this elementary matrix is carrying the information to exchange row 1 and row 2, right? All right, okay, so E times B is what? E times B is, I work it out over here, and E times B is related to the original matrix B by switching row 1 and row 2, right? And now I want to work out, um, well, what's determinant of E times B, right? All right, now the determinant of E times B, right, um, 
is related to the determinant of your original matrix, okay? Because um, B and E times B, right? The relationship between those two matrices is you switch, um, uh, you switch two rows, right? So the determinant of E, B over here is going to be the negative of the determinant of B. So that's what I have over here because you got E, B by switching two rows of B, right? But you want to remember that um, determinant of E, right, is actually minus one, right? Okay, so what I get in this case is the determinant of uh, EB is equal to the determinant of uh, E times B, right? Okay, and that's the case of uh, when this E over here is an elementary matrix corresponding to switching two rows, right? All right, so what I just uh, did is I gave an example of this result over here in the case of um, when this matrix E over here, capital E, is an elementary matrix where you switch two rows, right? All right, um, and to prove this statement over here, right, um, for your other cases, um, for example, if uh, this E over here is an elementary matrix, corresponding to when the row operation is multiplying a row by a non-zero scalar, right? Um, you use the same idea, right? Okay, so what did we actually do, right? Well, what we did is we worked out what the determinant of um, if the row operation is multiplying a row by a non-zero scalar, right? Um, well, what's the determinant of the elementary matrix for that, right? Well, you use the fact that uh, the determinant, you could actually just write it out, but you could do it this way also. Well, the determinant of an identity matrix is equal to one, right? Um, because any identity matrix will look like this. And when you take the determinant of it, the determinant of the diagonal elements would be equal to one, right? So that is where that comes from. Okay. And um, if we're looking at, say, this row operation over here, where you're multiplying row i by a non-zero scalar, right? Um, then this elementary matrix is what you're doing is you take any identity and you multiply and um, you're applying that single row operation to it, right? Um, so you're taking a row i over here and multiplying it by a scalar c, right? Okay, and the determinant of the e over here is going to be related to the determinant of the, the original matrix, which in this case is the identity, right? So the determinant of the modified matrix is equal to the determinant of the original matrix. And in order to figure out the relationship, well, you could really just use this formula here, right? Okay, so the determinant of the epsilon i n, right, in this case would be c times the determinant of the original matrix. And the determinant of the original matrix i n is 1, right? Okay, so the determinant of... Uh, Epsilon i n when epsilon is uh, when epsilon is multiplying row i by c right the determinant of this e over here is going to be c times determinant of um, i n and so that would just be c times one which is c over here right so that's how you get this here right the determinant of the e is c and now what you do is you consider um, determinant of e times b in this case, right? Now, this e over here is carrying, when you're doing this multiplication, that has the effect of um, multiplying um, row i of b by a scalar c, right? So this e b is doing a row operation on b, right? And the row operation that is doing on b is multiplying row i of uh, b by a non-zero scalar, which means that um, the original matrix B is related to the modified matrix B by C times the determinant of the original matrix, right? And we just saw that this C over here is equal to the determinant of the elementary matrix E, right? So this gives us determinant of EB is equal to determinant of E times determinant of B in um, this case of uh, multiplying a row by a non-zero scalar, right? So we saw this, an example of switching two rows, and I just explained... Um, when the row operation is multiplying by a row by a non-zero scalar, this statement is going to hold, right? For the elementary matrix that corresponds to this row operation, C times row i. Okay. 
Right, so now what I want to do is I want to consider this more general case here, right, where I have A and B, uh, any um, square matrices of the same size, right, then the determinant of A times B is equal to the determinant of A times the determinant of B, right. Okay, and how I'm going to show this is I'm going to use this result here, right, and this is illustrating why I'm doing this is to illustrate the fact of uh, why the elementary matrices come in handy, right? Because in order to show this, what we're going to do is we're going to write um, your matrix A over here as a product of elementary matrices, right? Um, so the elementary matrices uh, is more of a device to, um, that you use to prove certain things in linear algebra, right? Um, and you may use it probably to, remember we used it to justify an algorithm to get an inverse of a matrix by row reduction, right? So the point of the elementary matrices, it will help build, say, probably some useful algorithms, right? Anyway, so we're going to use it over here, right? Um, and how I'm going to show this is I'm going to show it in this case over here when your matrix A is non-singular, right? Um, and I'm going to do it by an example. And how I'm going to do it is this matrix A over here I'm going to express as a product of elementary matrices, right? Okay, so let's look at this example here, right? Um, I have a square matrix, which is this two by two matrix, right? Um, uh, notice it's um, non-singular, right? Um, right? The rank of this matrix over here is um, is two, right? The dimension of the row space, because if you look at um, first row and second row, they're not multiples of each other, right? So these rows are linearly independent, right? Okay, which means that the dimension of uh, the row space is going to be 2, right? Anyway, so I have this matrix A over here, and, well, I want to get to write it in terms of elementary matrices. Now, how would I do that, right? Well, how I do that is, well, I can start off using Gauss-Jordan. Uh, when I apply Gauss-Jordan to this 2, 2, 0, 1, right, what I would get is I'd multiply... Um, well, applying Gauss Jordan to this, divide your first row by um, two, which is row one by a half. So that gives me this one, one in my first row, right? Okay, and then the next thing is, once I have this over here, what I want to do is I want to make this one over here zero, right? So I add minus row two to row one, right? And that gives me a zero here, right? Okay, so doing these two row operations transform uh, your original matrix A to an RREF, right? And this RREF is identity, right? Okay, so this is our next justification that um, this matrix is non-singular because when you apply gauss jordan and if you get an identity over here, that's an indication that this matrix over here is non-singular, right? Because um, the dimension of uh, your row space of this original matrix is the number of non-zero rows in this RREF, right? And the number of non-zero rows in this RREF is two, right? Okay, right, so this is a non-singular matrix. We applied um, two row operations to get this RREF, right? Now let's use um, the epsilon notation to indicate these row operations, right? Okay, so what this means over here is I had my matrix A and I applied two row operations to it, right? I applied epsilon one, and then I applied epsilon two, right? And after applying epsilon one and epsilon two, what I got was the identity matrix. So the A transformed to the identity matrix after your two row operations, epsilon one and epsilon two, right? We saw previously that um, I can, if I have a matrix A and I apply a single row operation to it, right? I can achieve that uh, modification of A by a row operation by multiplying by an appropriate elementary matrix over here, right? Okay, and if I have a sequence of row operations, then I can achieve that sequence of row operations by applying, uh, by multiplying um, by elementary matrices here, right? Okay, so that's how I go from this line here to this line, right? To apply epsilon 1 and epsilon 2, right, um, what I can do is I can multiply A by suitable elementary matrices, right? And I actually wrote it out over here, right? Okay, so this is my matrix A over here that I have to start off with, right? And multiplying by this elementary matrix over here will have the effect of um, 
divide integral 1 by 2, right? Or multiply integral 1 by a half, right? And you can multiply out this middle matrix by matrix A. And you'd realize that what you'd get is 1, 1, 1, 0, right? Okay, and um, this matrix over here carries the information to um, add minus row 2 to row 1, right? Okay, so over here what I had was, when I worked this out, I had 1, 1, 0, 1, right? And when I multiply by 1 minus 1, 0, 1, right? What I will get is I get this identity, right? Anyway, so this, the elementary matrix corresponding to epsilon 1, right? Corresponding to this is this matrix here, right? This is the matrix, elementary matrix, epsilon 1, I2. And the elementary matrix corresponding to epsilon 2 is this one over here. Okay, so I have that, right? I have A times these two elementary matrices give me the identity matrix, right? Now, what can I do with that, right? Um, well, what I can do with that is you want to remember that um, elementary matrices, they always have an inverse, right? And that is something else that we saw previously when we were looking at elementary matrices. So we saw this, that um, if I have an elementary matrix over here, right, Ep elementary matrix epsilon I am, right, then every elementary matrix is going to have an inverse matrix, right? Okay, so I use that over here, right? Um, each of these matrices here, the epsilon 1, I2, and the epsilon 2, I2, these two elementary matrices are invertible, right? And because they're invertible, what I can do is I can move them across right uh, on the right hand side right okay so when I move first one across I'm gonna get epsilon 2 inverse over here and then I'm gonna have epsilon 1 inverse over here right uh, and you want to notice the order when I take uh, when I move them across right what I'd have is epsilon 1 inverse first and then epsilon 2 inverse afterwards right okay so I can move these two elementary matrices across onto my right hand side, right? And what I have is I have, now I have A expressed as these two matrices here, right? But um, uh, this is an inverse of an elementary matrix, right? But this is, all, if you notice what this is saying over here, right? If I have an elementary matrix and I take the inverse of it, the inverse of it is you get by take an identity and apply in the row operation epsilon inverse, right? And epsilon inverse is just the inverse row operation. So epsilon inverse over here is a, a row operation. So what I'm saying over here is that if I have an elementary matrix and I take the inverse of it, I'm also going to get a next elementary matrix, right? Okay, so the elementary matrix, uh, okay, so let's just see an example here, right? The elementary matrix for epsilon 1, it was a half zero, 0, 1, right? And the elementary matrix for epsilon 1 inverse, right, is going to be 2, 0, 0, 1, right? Okay, so this over here, epsilon 1 is, the row operation is half row 1, right? And over here, the row operation is 2 times row 1, right? It's the inverse row operation, right? Anyway, so the point over here is that this epsilon 1 inverse is in fact an elementary matrix. And this epsilon 2 inverse is also an elementary matrix, right? Okay, so what that means is that I've just written A as a product of elementary matrices, right? Um, and this, okay, and if you have a non-singular matrix, you'd always be able to do this, right? A non-singular matrix, you'd always be able to write it as a product of uh, elementary matrices, right? Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to give uh, an illustration of um, this result over here, how the proof of it works, right? In the case when the A over here is this 2, 2, 0, 1, and the B could be anything, right? Um, okay, and the point that I'm using is that this A, which is 2, 2, 0, 1, right, I wrote as a product of elementary matrices, right? Okay, so the determinant of AB, I'm considering that over here, right? Now, determinant of AB is determinant, I can write the A as a product of two elementary matrices, E1 and E2, so that's what I do over here. Right, um, and when I'm doing this matrix multiplication of these three matrices inside here, right, I can always group, right, I can always multiply the E2 by the B first and then multiply by the E1 afterwards, right. 
Okay, and what you want to notice over here, right, is this this line here, this second line, right, um, is you have an elementary matrix times some other matrix over here. Right? I'm not saying that the, the e, e2 times b is an elementary matrix, but it is some um, some square matrix, a um, 2 by 2 matrix, right? So I have determinant of an elementary matrix times some matrix over here, right? And that actually is this setup. Uh, once I have um, elementary matrix times an X matrix, I can always just write it as determinant of an elementary matrix times the matrix, right? So that what I do is I use this result here, right, to split this, right? So this determinant elementary matrix times a matrix here is equal to the determinant of elementary matrix times the determinant of the matrix E2, E, B, right? Okay, so I get this line, and now notice here what I have is determinant of an elementary matrix times B, right? So what I can do is I can actually split again, right, using this result, right? And here I have determinant of E1 times determinant of E2 times determinant of B, right? And now what I have is product of two determinants here, right, where the first one is an elementary matrix, right? So I can now use this result again, right? I have determinant of uh, E1 over here, and now use this as E2 here, right? And if I have a product of determinants where the first one is elementary, right? That in fact is determinant of the product, right? So I'm now going to... Okay, so I used um, this result here, determinant EB is equal to determinant of E times determinant of B, right? to split going from here to here, right? And now what I can do is I can use it again, right? To split a determinant of E2B, right? As determinant E2 times determinant B, right? So I use it again, right? And now what I have is determinant of E1 times determinant of E2 times determinant of B, right? Now notice over here what I have is a product of uh, two determinants, like what I have across here. And the first one over here is an elementary matrix, right? Okay, so what that means is I can use this result over here instead to split, right? But to merge them now, right? So the determinant of E1 times determinant of E2. I can use E1 over here and E2 over here. And what this will tell me is that that's equal to determinant E1, E2, right? Okay, so using this result, I merge the determinant E1, E2, right? times b and you want to remember that the a is in fact e1 e2 right um so i get the a over here right okay and what i end up with is the determinant of um a times b is equal to the determinant of a times the determinant of b right okay so the idea of how i'm proving uh, this here right is if i want to show this and i know that the a matrix a is non-singular right I can write the matrix A as a product of elementary matrices, right? Okay, and then what you do is you use this result. If I have the product of elementary matrices times B, I can repeatedly use this result to split it apart like this over here, right? And then once I split it apart, right, um, what I do is the E's over here, I'm going to merge them back together by again using this result, right? But now going from the right-hand side to the left-hand side, right? And when I merge them back, and at least in this case, I have this product of elementary matrices, which is my original matrix A, right? Okay, so that's the idea of the proof, right? The idea of the proof is to express um, A in terms of elementary matrices and then just use this result here, right? All right, so the next result that I want to look at for determinants is this over here, right? The determinant of uh, A is equal to the determinant of its transpose, right? Now, the proof of this, we're not going to go through, right? But the proof of it involves using the permutation definition, right, of the determinant, right? Okay, so you see in why um, this definition is handy, right? You'd be able to use it to prove things about determinants, right? Okay, but I'm not going to prove it using this over here. I'll just do a very simple case to illustrate the idea, right? Um, okay, not even illustrate the idea. This is just an extremely simple case, right? Okay, so I have a matrix A over here, which is 2 by 2 on the transpose you get by um, switching the rows and the columns, right? Um, or, right? Uh, and in case if it's, well, if it's a square matrix, um, when you're taking the transpose, what you do is you're reflecting in the main diagonal, right? 
Okay, so this is your main diagonal AD, right? And to get the transpose, you reflect in this main diagonal. So the B exchanges with C and the C exchanges with B. Right? right, and now let's work out determinant of A over here, right? Well, determinant of A by a formula of a determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix is A times B minus B times C, right? And the determinant of A transpose is A times D, right? Minus... Um, C times B, right? But C times B is the same as B times C, right? So you get the same answer over here, right? All right, so in this case, you see in that, in this simple two by two case, you see that the determinant of A is equal to determinant of A transpose, right? All right, so this is just a very simple observation, right? Of the fact that determinant of A is equal to determinant of A transpose. If you wanted to show this for more general cases, say for three by three and four by four and so on, right? then your method would be to use this proof over here, right? But that's, we're not going to do that in this class, right? Okay, so let's talk about cofactors. Um, we want to get determinants by cofactor expansion, and we're going to do your cofactor expansion along any row and any column, right? Um, I think I mentioned already what a cofactor is, but let me... Um, talk about it again right okay so if i have an n by n matrix right uh, capital a over here then your cofactor which we denote by c i j right um you can get by using a definition of the determinant but um for simplicity over here i'm just going to use the standard method of getting your cofactor and the standard method of getting a cofactor um, which i denote by c i j right um so cofactor ij right cij is uh, called ij cofactor of your matrix a right so it's uh, associated to a specific element ij of uh, your matrix a right um, and uh, how you get um, this cofactor cij right is what you do is for your original matrix a you're going to delete the i row and j column right um so you'll get a sub matrix okay so if a is an n by n matrix right when you delete uh i throw and j column of uh, this n by n matrix you're going to get uh, n minus one by n minus one matrix you're going to get a smaller square matrix right and the i j cofactors you're going to take the determinant of that uh, sub matrix and then you're going to multiply it by um, a sign, right? And the sign that you're going to multiply it by is going to be minus 1 to the power i plus j, right? So depending on what the i and j is, right? Um, if the i and j, the sum of them are even, right? Then this minus 1 to an even number will just give me 1. And if the i plus j is odd, right? Then the minus 1 to an odd number would be odd, right? Um, Okay, so this minus 1 factor over here, the minus 1 to the i plus j, is going to be either plus 1 or minus 1, depending on what the i and the j are, right? Um, okay, so let's just see some examples of um, getting your cofactor, right? And you want to notice that the cofactor over here is just a scalar, right? Because once you work out determinant of this matrix here, you get a scalar. And then the scalar times this plus or minus 1 over here will just give me an x scalar, right? Okay, so I have a matrix A over here. This is a 3 by 3 matrix, and I want to get uh, the cofactor uh, in for i is equal to 1 and j is equal to 1, right? So I want the C11 cofactor, right? Okay, and the C11 cofactor, they're using a slightly different notation here in this textbook. Uh, they're using capital C, and I'm using common C, right? But it's the same thing, right? Okay, so you see one one cofactor, it's going to be minus one to power one plus one, and where this one and one are coming from, the i is equal to one and the j is equal to one, right? Um so it's minus one, one plus one, right? And this m one one is the minor and that's the determinant of uh, a one one, right? Um so I don't use this um term in my course notes over here, but when you form your sub matrix, right, and you take the determinant of that, right, this over here is the ij minor over here, right? So the determinant of the sub matrix aij 
SDIJth minor, right? And that's the notation that they're using over here, right? So the cofactor C11 is equal to minus 1 i plus j times the minor, the ijth minor, right? And in this case, the i is equal to 1 and j is equal to 1, right? And this m11 is just the determinant of uh, the submatrix, right? Okay, so it's not really that hard. Probably what's confusing over here is the notation, right? So the cofactor C11, what you're going to do is, well, first you want to form your submatrix, right? So the 1, 1, you're looking at position 1, 1 over here, and position 1, 1 is the tree is in that position 1, 1, right? And you're going to form your submatrix by... Um, form the submatrix by deleting i throw and jth column, right? So i throw i is equal to 1 over here, so you delete in the first row. And j is equal to 1, um, so you delete the first column over here. When you delete first row and first column, you get this 2 by 2 submatrix. And what you need to do is you need to take the determinant of that, right? And the determinant of the 5, 6, 4, 8, which is in this notation here, 5, 6, 4, 8. This is 16, right? So this M1J is the same as my determinant of uh, AIJ, right? Determinant of AIJ is the minor, the IJ is minor, right? Okay, and then finally, your required cofactor is going to be for cofactor for I is equal to 1 and J is equal to 1 is minus 1 to the 1 plus 1, minus 1, 1 plus 1 times this determinant over here. So minus 1 times... Minus 1 to the power 1 plus 1 is plus 1, and then plus 1 times this determinant is 16. So your cofactor for the 1, 1 position is 16 over here, right? So for your same matrix, 3 by 3 matrix, what we want to get is your cofactor for row 3, column 2, right? So what you need to do is you'd need to delete row 3 and column 2, and when you delete row 3 and column 2, you're going to get this submatrix here, 3 minus 4, 2, 6, right? And to get the cofactor, you need to take the determinant of that, which is what this is over here. And the determinant of the 2 by 2 submatrix is 26, right? Right, so the required cofactor is going to be minus 1 i plus j, so it's 3 plus 2 over here. And 3 plus 2 is 5, right? So you get minus 1 to the power of 5, which is negative, right? Okay, so you have a negative over here, and then negative times the determinant here which is 26, right? So minus 26 is your required cofactor in this case. All right, so we can use cofactors to um, calculate determinants. This is not an efficient way of doing things, right? But you can use um, cofactors to um, calculate determinants, and we call that um, cofactor expansion or Laplace expansion, right? Um, so you can do your Laplace expansion along rows, or you can do it along columns, right? And you probably, I'm pretty sure you saw this already, right? Um, okay, so for Laplace this expansion along a row, right? And this result over here is, will allow you to get Laplace uh, expansion, to calculate the determinant via Laplace expansion along any row, right? So for example, with this um, three by three matrix, you're going to see how to get the determinant by expanding along your first row or the second row, right? In both cases, um, well, obviously, you're going to get the same answer, right? Okay, so how would you do it, right? Well, let's just recall how you know how to do it by expanding along the first row, right? Um, so what you do is you'd have, you start with this, well, you go and use any elements from your first row. And then in this tree over here, right, um, first element in the first row, right, um, what you're going to do is you're going to form your submatrix, which is 2, 2, 3, 0. You're going to take the determinant of that and multiply against the tree, right? So that is what this is saying over here, right? Um, right. So you're going to take the element that, um, so what I'm working with over here is row 1. So i is equal to 1, right? So your formula over here, it would be a 1, 1, which in this case is 3, right? You take the determinant of the submatrix, and the submatrix for the 1, 1 position is 2, 2, 3, 0, right? And then finally, what you need to do is you need to multiply by an appropriate sign, right? So, well, the sign is associated to this determinant over here, right, to get the cofactor, right? Um, and the sign is minus 1i plus 1, and in this case, 
the i is equal to one because we're looking at row i, right? Um, okay, so your sign in this case over here is going to be minus one to the one plus one, right? The i is equal to one. Right, so i is equal to one, so you're gonna get one plus one over here, which is two, right? So minus one to the power of two is one over here, so I get a plus one over here, right? Okay, so I have uh, three times this determinant times plus one, which is this over here, right? And then it'll be zero times your appropriate sub determinant of a submatrix. So you take out your um, your first row and your second column. The submatrix that you would get is one two minus one zero, which is one two minus one zero. You're going to multiply by zero over here, and then you need to use an appropriate sign, right? And the sign would be, um, well, one easy way to see it is once you correctly determine the sign of this one, then the signs are going to be plus, minus, plus, right? They're going to alternate, right? So the sign for this one over here would be negative here, right? Um, but it doesn't make a difference really because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be multiplying by zero here, right? Remember, you are taking this term and you're multiplying taking your term over here and multiplying by determinant of the two by two matrix, right? So zero times determinant of two by two matrix times minus one. So this will just drop off for me, right? Okay, and then finally, what you do is you'd use this term over here, the one over here, get your submatrix, which is one, two, minus one, three, take the determinant of that, right? The sign for this, so if this one is plus, the sign for here is plus, the sign for this is minus, then the sign for this would be plus, right? Uh, you take a determinant over here, one, two, minus one, three. Right? And you multiply it against the one, right? Okay, so your determinant, when you expand along the first row, would be three times this determinant of a two by two, right? Zero times this um, determinant of a two by two, so this term will drop off because it's zero. And then one times the determinant of this two by two, right? And this isn't hard to work out, right? Um, okay, so in this case over here, what you're going to get is 3 times um, minus 6, which is minus 18 over here. And in this case here, right, what you're going to get is 3 minus minus 2, which is 3 plus 5, 3 plus 2, which is 5, right? So I have minus 18 from here, right? Plus 5 from here, right? So I get minus 13, right? Okay, so that's expanding along your first row, right? But we could also expand along the second row, right? And that is what this result is saying, right? We can expand along any row that we want, right? Um, first row, second row, and so on, right? We just need to just do it in a systematic way, right? Okay, so if you're expanding along your second row, right? Um, the sign for this one over here, right? And again, it's pretty easy to see what the signs are. It will follow a checkerboard pattern. So it'll be plus here, minus here, plus here, right? Um, minus, plus, minus, right? Right, so your signs are, it's plus over here, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, right? So we're expecting, it's gonna have a minus associated to this, a plus associated to this, and a minus associated to this, right? Or you could just work it out over here, right? Um, your sign, this is minus one to the i plus one. In this case, we work in at row two, right? Okay, so this i plus one, what you're looking at is you're looking at the, when the i is equal to two, right? We start off over here with the first element in the second row, right? Um, and the first element in the second row, the sign associated with it would be um, two plus one, right? So minus one to the two plus one, which is minus one to the power three, which is negative here, right? So with this term over here, you're gonna have a negative associated to it, right? Which is this negative here, right? So one times your negative sign, the minus one, and then you take the determinant of uh, your appropriate uh, two by two submatrix. So you cross out this first column over here and the second row and you're looking at zero one three zero which is this matrix here. Zero one three zero and you take the determinant of that, right? And then you keep going with your expansion, right? So now you're looking at the two over here, you would form your submatrix, which would be three one minus one zero, three one minus one zero, right? You multiply that against the two, right? So that is what this is saying over here. You take the determinant of the submatrix multiply it against the term in question, which is two over here. 
I don't need to figure out what the sine is, right? But as I said, if you this one is minus, then this is going to be plus over here, right? So I have a plus here. Okay, and then finally, the sine for this one over here would be minus, and then you're going to have 2, right, um, times the minus sign over here, and then you need the appropriate um, 2 by 2 determinant, so which would be 3, 0, minus 1, 3 here, right? Okay, so your Laplace expansion along your second row would be this here, and you need to just work out your 2 by 2 determinants, and then calculate the answer, and then when you work it out over here, you're going to get minus 13. Okay, and what this result says in the notes is that I can do a Laplace expansion along a column, right? Um, okay, so any column that I want, I can do a Laplace expansion along, right? And the process is similar to what I had from doing a Laplace expansion along a row, right? Okay, so for this example here, right, um, what we want to do is you want to expand along the third column here, right? Okay, so how do you do it, right? Um, well, as I said, it's similar to what we did for the row, right? So we start with, um, in your column here, you start with the first element, one here, right? And then your form determinant to the two by two, which would be one, two, minus one, three. The one, two, minus one, three. You have that determinant over here. And then, so it'll be this element, which is the one times the determinant of the one, two, minus one, three, right? And then you need to multiply by an appropriate sign, right? Now again, the sign you could really use a checkerboard pattern. So on this top left-hand corner, you'd have a plus, and then minus, then plus, right? And on the bottom here, you'd have plus here, minus, then plus, right? So if I have a plus here, the one underneath there would be minus, and then this would be plus, right? Or you could just work it out from your formula here, right? Um, the sign associated to the one over here would be minus one i plus j, right? Um, and now when you're working in rows, the i is equal, well, it, it's j, right? Um, so in this case, the j is equal to three, right? And then if we're working in rows, we're starting at i is equal to one, then i is equal to two, and i is equal to three, right? So your first term over here would be i is equal to one over here, and then in this case, the j is equal to three, right? So you'd have minus 1 to the 1 plus 3, which is minus 1 to the 4, which is plus 1, right? Okay, so for this 1 over here, we're going to have a plus 1 associated to it, right? Um, and then for this 2 over here, it will be 2 plus 3, right? And 2 plus 3 is 5, so minus 1 to the 2 plus 3, which is minus 1 to the 5, is minus 1, right? So the sign for this 2 over here is negative, right? Which is this negative, yeah. Okay, so the signs for when you go in for this third column would be um, plus over here, negative over here, and plus over here, right? Okay, so let's do the expansion, right? So as I had before, right, one, right, this element times the determinant of the two by two submatrix, which you get by eliminating first row and third column, and then you're going to be multiplying that by the sign of plus one, right? And then you have your second term in your column, so you form your submatrix, which is three zero minus one three. Take the determinant of that, and this here is going to have a minus sign associated to it, and you need to multiply by the two, right? So that is what's going on here, right? So the determinant of the submatrix, sign associated to it, and then you need to actually multiply by the element, which in this case is two, right? Okay, so you'd get that, and then um, you have your third term over here, which is zero, right? So zero times the determinant of the two by two matrix, and then the sign for the zero is um, positive here, right? Which is this plus one, right? Okay, but this would just all drop off for us, right? Because that's just gonna be zero, right? So what I'd have is one times this determinant minus two times this determinant over here, right? Um, Okay, and uh, over here, what would I get, right? What I'd have over here, this is 3 minus minus 2. So this one works out to be 5, right? Um, this here is 9 times 2, which is 18 times minus 1, which is minus 18. So I have minus 18 plus 5, which is the minus 13. I notice that's the same answer that I got when I expanded along... Um, uh, the first row or the second row, right? In all cases, I got minus 30. So let's recall what um, cofactor matrix, the cofactor matrix and your joint matrix is associated to a square matrix A, right? 
Right, so if I have a square matrix A, right, uh, then uh, square n, uh, n by n matrix A, right, then your cofactor matrix associated to A, right, um, is also going to be a n by n matrix, where the ijth entry of uh, this cofactor matrix is the ijth cofactor of A, right. Um, okay, so it's really easy to just look at a case, right. So here I have a 3 by 3 matrix, general 3 by 3 matrix, and to get the cofactor matrix, for example, if I want the the one one um, entry of uh, the cofactor matrix to get the one one entry of the cofactor matrix you look at this one one position over here you get rid of uh, the row and the column you have your appropriate um, sub matrix over here you take the determinant of that the determinant is a two two you take the determinant of the sub matrix which is a two two a two three a three two and a three three which is this one over here now, when you're forming your cofactor, right, remember the cofactor is the determinant with the associated sign, right? And the sign is, the sign is actually shown over here. The sign has your checkerboard pattern that I was talking about, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, and so on, right? Okay, so this is already sign, well, the formula over here is it does, it's taken into account the signs, right? So your cofactor for the A11, cofactor in the 1-1 one, one position, right, um, is you look at this matrix A, you look at the uh, first A, you look at the entry in the 1-1 one, one position, you get rid of the row and column containing that, you look at the submatrix, take the determinant of that, and then finally use the appropriate sign, right? Okay, so similarly to get the the entry in the 1-2 position of your cofactor matrix, right, um, you look at the original matrix, um, Take the one two consider the one two element. Get rid of a first row, second column, right? You'd form a submatrix a two one a three one a two three a three three, right? Take the determinant of that, right? Um, and then multiply by minus sign to get the cofactor, right? Um, so the cofactor is the determinant with the appropriate sign, and the appropriate sign for the um the one two position is negative here, right? Okay, so this would be how you'd form your cofactor matrix here, right? And an example would be using actual values would be this here, right? Right, so this is a matrix, three by three matrix, and to get the cofactor in the one one position, what you're going to do is you form your sub matrix, which would be um six three minus four zero, right? And you take the determinant of the six three minus four zero. When you take the determinant of that, you're going to get um minus minus twelve, which is plus twelve over here, right? Okay, and similarly to get um the cofactor in the um one two position here, right? Um row one column two, right? You're going to consider submatrix 1, 2, 3, 0. Take a determinant there. Determinant of 1, 2, 3, 0 is minus 6. But then you need to adjust that by a minus sign. So you get plus 6, right? So you'd form your cofactors this way, right? And your adjoint of A, right? Or adjugate of A, right? Is the transpose of the cofactor matrix, right? Um, some people call it adjoint and some people call it adjugate, right? Uh, I guess in this class we'd call it a joint, right? Um, okay, so your yeah, joint of A is the transpose of the cofactor matrix, right? So notice over here what you're doing is um, in your your joint over here, this entry here in your one two position is actually the two one entry in the cofactor matrix, right? And it's easier to see the transpose in an actual numerical example. So this here is the cofactor matrix for A, right? And notice your joint, you take the transpose, so it's your main diagonal, you keep your main diagonal, and then you just reflect across your main diagonal, right? So the four exchanges with a six, the 12 exchanges with a minus 16, and then the minus 10 exchanges with the 16 here, right? Okay, so a joint is transpose of a cofactor matrix, right? And, um, well, 
why we care about a joint is this formula here, right? Which is not an efficient way for calculating inverse, but you would have seen this already anyway, right? In um, year 11, 80, right? Okay, so if you want to calculate the inverse of a matrix using a joint, right? Um, what you do is you have your matrix A, you form your cofactor matrix, take the transpose of it to get the adjoint matrix, right? And then finally, to get the inverse, you um, divide your adjoint matrix by one on the determinant of A, right? Or if you want, you have your adjoint matrix and you multiply by the scalar one on the determinant of A, right? Now, obviously, this formula only works if um, your determinant is non-zero, right? If your determinant is zero, then the matrix A does not have an inverse.